I had to come to Birkenhead about a year ago, as I was taking my dad to hospital for a small procedure. Then I knew I had a couple of hours to hang about, so I thought I'll check the megalithic portal. See if I can find anything interesting, anywhere to visit. And I found uh, the two ancient burial mounds in the middle of the town. But sadly, they're now destroyed. And they're where Merseyside Park is now. So I decided to have a look anyway, pass the time. There wasn't a lot to see at the park, but it was nice. But the research was interesting. I managed to turf up an old urban legend, and I thought it was worth a video. And I discovered that Merseyside Park in Birkenhead is the oldest urban park in the world, and it formed a template for Central Park in New York. And the park is located in the centre of Birkenhead, on the Merseyside. And it was opened to the public in, on the 5th of April 1847. And it is generally acknowledged as the first public funded civic park in the world. However, it was constructed on several Neolithic burial mounds, possibly dating from 4300 BC. Uh, in the early 18th century, the bonks, as they were called locally, were two grassy mounds at the side of the road. And the ilix were so popular as a playground for the kids and traditionally children used to roll Easter eggs down the two mounds at Easter. The grass was so torn up and muddy that they became unsightly. So the local council decided to flatten them completely at the time of constructing the park. But sadly, most of the finds of that era were discarded as rubbish because apparently anything pre-Roman wasn't considered history back in the 1800s. Now, there is no official record, as far as I can find, of any proper archaeological survey done at that time. Just rumours of them being excavated in 1842. But there was a Bronze Age axe head found during construction of the park, rumoured anyway. Now, during the research of the mounds, I discovered an urban legend. It was about a local boy whose father had told him stories about the bonks. And he said the two mis mysterious ancient burial mounds are where the people of the Bronze Age buried a Celtic king and queen thousands of years before the birth of Christianity. And he told him of that Bronze Age axe and other ancient artefacts which were unearthed when the land for the park was being excavated in 1842. But rumours had it that there was a veritable treasure trove buried around the site of the bonks, still. So the story goes that one humid July morning in 1972, around 5am, a 21-year-old student named Philip left the YMCA on Birkenhead's Whetstone Lane and walked to the house of his friend Gordon, who lived close by. From there, the two young men took a five-minute stroll to a certain spot in Birkenhead Park, close to Asheville Road. And here, Gordon assembled his own made metal detector and they were in search of treasure. When they arrived, Philip took the spade out of the long coal sack and waited as his friend listened for any bleeping sounds from the metal detector's headphones. After around quarter of an hour, the sweeping coil picked something metallic up and Philip began to dig. And he dug quite deep and he saw something metallic in the soil and clay. It was a silvery thimble-like object. He handed it to Gordon and he continued to dig as the rising sun slowly peeped over the trees of the park. Suddenly Philip spotted something in the wetland soil and he knelt on the grass and thrust his arm to the hole and he retrieved a silver ring with an obsidian crescent mounted on it, possibly a symbol of the moon perhaps. And a couple of minutes after this Philip spade uncovered what looked like a green snake with its tail in its mouth. Turns out it was a gold talk, an ancient Celtic necklace with its green patina. 
And as his friend was babbling on about the finds, the boy says, Hey, who in the God's name are they? As he nodded at something behind his friend to his right, they saw four hooded men in black that looked like monks, and the faces were barely visible under their hoods. And they were about 20 yards away. Their sudden presence really spooked the amateur treasure hunters. But the four hooded figures suddenly dashed towards the two young men, and they legged it quickly. But they held on to the metal detector and the talk, and the two boys were chased out of the park, and the weirdly dressed pursuers seemed to vanish into thin air. Later on that same day, the two young men returned to the dig and found a spade broken in half, and two policemen were crouching near the hole where they'd been excavating. So they left the park quickly. Now Gordon kept the gold torque and Philip kept the ring with the obsidian crescent moon feature. And he said he was going to offer it to a certain girl he'd admired for some time as an eternity ring. So he cleaned the ring till it gleamed. Later when he met the girl he showed her the ring and he told her how ancient it was and she seemed mesmerised by it. She slipped it onto the third finger of her left hand and agreed to go on a date with him. Now, at the end of the night, they were alone in the dark walking the girl home when suddenly four hooded figures emerged from the fog. It were the same four monks they'd seen in the park that morning. Now, the girl swore and shouted at the figures in panic and anger, but one of them lunged forward and seized her hand and it easily removed the obsidian ring and the four monks just vanished into thin air again. The girl let out a scream and seemed confused. She was confused because she had no recollection of the night or even agreeing to the date with Philip. Later she explained that she felt like the ring had possessed her. She felt mesmerised. It does make you wonder what the ring's significance and value to these four ancient entities was, and what would have happened to the couple if they had not obtained the artefact. The article did say that the girl carried on seeing Philip, which is a nice ending. Now, it's a pity that most of the finds of the 18th century ended up in storage in places like Liverpool and Chester. Because during the World War, the bombings of Liverpool, etc., destroyed most of these storage places. And so much of the world history was lost. Plus, due to the expansion of urban areas since the war, we're looking to find anything. <laughs>